just before we start, it would be interesting to know what countries you are from. Maybe you can write your country in the chat window. Sweden, Germany. And I can see a couple of things as well. But one I think the Swedes are winning, right? Yeah, they are. And there's one from between Finland and Sweden, <laughs> so to say. <clears throat> All right. So today we're going to talk about optimizing WordPress and specifically PHP performance using Tideways. And uh, we as an organizer who we are, so we are a company providing premium hosting and upkeep for WordPress. So part of our stuff, thing we do is that we're a hosting company, but the special thing for us is that we also do upkeep. And upkeep means that all of the sites we have, we host, are monitored 24-7. And if WordPress goes down, a human from our staff will go and check out what's wrong. And we also take care of security and performance and updates, for example, to make sure that your WordPress site is running nicely. And here you can see our technical stack. We have the best possible stack for running WordPress and also lots of tools around WordPress and related to WordPress development. And this Tideways is one example of additional tool we offer easily integrated in our environment to make the life of developers as easy as possible. So the usual problem pe problems people fails, face with WordPress are related often to performance and security. And we work a lot with improving those for all of our customers and our platform and our service. And today we're talking about performance. And that's something we take very seriously. And there is actually this website is my host fast that publishes data that is based on Chrome telemetry data. So the Chrome browser is collecting data from its users on what web page they visit and how they load. And this data is used to optimize Chrome so that it will work faster. But this data can also be used to do other kinds of interesting analysis. For example, Google staff have published this website that compares at what hosting companies have a, on average more faster sites or less slow sites. And we are the fastest. In this comparison, we are the fastest WordPress hosting company in the world. So talking about performance is close to our heart. So today we're going to talk about code profiling to be able to find, find out bottlenecks in PHP. Benjamin is going to tell you more about what profiling actually is. And uh, if you haven't been doing it before, you absolutely should start doing it because it's a very good way to understand what the WordPress site is doing as a whole and understand what the role of your own code, your own team and your own plugin is in the WordPress system. And at Cerevo, we offer Xdebug in our development environment. And Xdebug is OK for development, but it's not suitable for production use because it slows down the site so much. So for production use, we recommend Tideways. Here is a screenshot how it looks like if you are using Xdebug and WebGrind in your local development environment. And there is a link to the Cerevo developer documentation on how to use Xdebug. But today the topic is Tideways, and you can also read about it on our developer documentation. And in this webinar, obviously, you're going to learn a lot about Tideways. So I'm going to do a live demo how to enable Tideways on a site running at Cerevo and how to find out bottlenecks and how to fix them. And Benjamin is going to tell in general what Tideways is and what is the potential you can reach using Tideways. 
All right. So, be my guest. Yes. Hi. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Benjamin. I'm going to uh, take over the presentation and uh, give an introduction to Tideways. So um, thank you, Otto and Zaravo, for having me today. And um, I am Benjamin, as I said, uh, the CEO of Tideways. And we are a small company from uh, Germany. And uh, we yeah, work on PHP performance topics and how to improve it um, if you're using it uh, to host your web applications. So. I guess one thing to start with is the question of why is important uh, performance important? And uh, I came across this blog post from the Nielsen Norman Group, which is something you, you may or a company you may have heard of. They focus a lot on usability in the web and have been publishing on this for many, many years. And um, they just published a blog post on the need for speed and mention um, why performance is so important for usability is because uh, delays of one second or more are enough to interrupt a person's consciousness when they are interacting with an application. So um, slow applications reduce conversion in any way. So less readers, less click-throughs, less everything if the site is slow. So. Uh, what is Tideways doing to help? Um, Otto already mentions that Tideways is a tool that is um, or that uh, they recommend using for production. So Tideways is a, a production profiler and helps analyze PHP and PHP backend performance. So at the foundation of Tideways is something called a tracing profiler. That's a very technical term. Um, and it essentially means that Tideways is a tool that is recording and reporting the execution of a program, um, for example, a WordPress application. And profiling means uh, measuring the frequency or duration of function calls, memory, and maybe other metrics that a program um, yeah, can generate. So what is slow? What is fast? How, how much memory is it taking? And this is the foundation of Tideways. So it's running in the background of a PHP application uh, with low overhead and uh, collects this information and uh, allows you to uh, take um, yeah, uh, results from it. So how does Tideways represent this? So it runs in the background, generates all this data and uh, presents it in four different big ways, I would say. So the first one is sort of the high level context view, aggregated monitoring data. So every request that any user or bot or any background job is creating in your application, Tideways is measuring how long it takes. And then it's aggregating this and this allows you to have a lot of context. So like the heartbeat of a human, where you would know what is the normal heartbeat of a human, um, you, you would be able to see sort of what is the heartbeat of your application. And when, when it's changing a lot, for example, then there must be an underlying cause for it. So this gives you sort of um, an overview. And from there, we um, provide detailed profiling traces where you can see for a specific request, for example, um, a specific user visiting the front page or a detail page of something. What took how long in this request? Um, where there are a lot of database queries, where there are a lot of plugins that uh, worked a lot on data. Um, you are able to see this in a lot of detail. And um, a third dimension is uh, error and exception traces, which means when a user is visiting the site and it's failing because of a programming mistake, then there's a representation that shows you what uh, uh, the errors are and where they occurred so that you can um, easily fix them. And the fourth dimension is something that is uh, 
going to be new in a few weeks, which is SQL slow traces, which means that from the profiling data that Tideways collects, we are um, aggregating slow SQL queries so that you can easily see what database queries need to be optimized and maybe cause a slow site performance. All of this together, um, Tideways lets you experience the performance from a user perspective because we bucket all the information into different um, into the different operations that the user is taking. So very application and user centric. What is the performance if I make a search request um, for all the users or for a specific user? Or what is the um, performance for all the users looking at a category page uh, and um, uh, this, this sort of separation? So what Typebase does is by coupling explicitly to an application is being very application specific in the result that it generates. So a quick uh, glance at the monitoring overview. Um, we have five different sort of concepts there. Um, the most low level concept is called a transaction, which is a sort of a grouping page types like the search page, a category page, a front page, uh, an article page, uh, maybe API endpoints or background scripts. So you would see the performance for each individual page type uh, that you have, for example. Then you can group this into services, for example, into front end and back end, so that you don't mix up the performance between regular users and admin users, for example. Then you can split it even further up into different environments. So you see the performance based on either all the production requests or all the staging or development requests so that they don't uh, mix uh, up with each other and um, skew the results. Um, then there's a dimension that we call layers so that you can see in a minute what was each services contribution to the performance. So SQL, HTTP, Redis, for example. And then you can also split the performance based on releases. So was the performance improved or degraded after a release? And this is a quick overview. I guess the demo Otto will give, will show the screen more interactively for a, a while. Um, but here you can see sort of how it looks like. Uh, on the top, you see a very uh, uh, long-term view, several days of performance, and then you can uh, select a specific time frame and uh, go into more detail. The middle part shows the performance for every minute in um, every sort of um, um, section of the graph is one minute. And um, on the bottom, the section that's called transactions shows the performance of the currently selected time frame for individual page types. So this is a WordPress example where it has um, the single, which is a post, so the rendering of a specific post, then the 404 page, the front page, the search page, and then date in WordPress is um, uh, the archive page. Um, so for example, all posts in January 2020. Okay, so if we have this macro view, of the performance, then we can find out what specific things we want to optimize further. Because only if you have the big context, we can go into more detail and find out what we actually want to improve or what the bottlenecks are. For this, Tideways provides the profiler or a profiling component, which splits up into two profilers. Uh, and Otto will show them uh, and uh, interactively in his demo in a few minutes. So we have a timeline profiler, uh, which is uh, similar to um, the Google Chrome and Firefox networks tab, where you can see every part of a request and um, how much time it contributed to the total duration of this request. And this is a positive profiler, we call it, because we programmed every specific profiling um, yeah, tool that we have into it. So database queries and everything is 
explicitly selected by us for being uh, um, profiled. Um, this way we control the overhead because it's running only on a very few functions that are interesting. And the second part is a core graph profiler. And this is something you need to enable as a developer because it has much more overhead. Um, but it also provides you with the, the amount uh, and the duration of every function call in your application, which allows you to really find every bottleneck that there can be in your code. The timeline profile, as I said, looks like this sort of waterfall where you see at the top the, the total duration um, of an application. Um, uh, in this case, it's slightly above 70 milliseconds. And um, the second bar represents the WordPress application, which takes up the whole request. And then there are individual parts in between. And you can click on all of them to see um, uh, more detail about them, what they actually are and uh, how long they took. So one, for example, is you can click on uh, different events uh, and find out WordPress specific functions, how long they took. So in this case, the get header function, which in WordPress is responsible for rendering the header section uh, of the site, uh, took 11 milliseconds. Or if you select a SQL query, you will see a anonymous version of the query. Um, and if it takes longer, then um, you will be able to find out which query was the, the cause for this. Um, yeah. The call graph profiler, as I said, is a more detail. Um, and it's also the screen has much more information because of this. It, um, uh, here we uh, I'm showing the call graph profiler for also for a WordPress request. And at the top, you can see a specific selected function, in this case, load text domain, which in my experience is a regular contributor to WordPress performance problems. Uh, it is loading the translations. And um, in the top, in the bottom left, you see a list of all the functions sorted by their time. And you can click uh, on them. Uh, and on the right, you can see the dependencies between functions, so parent, children, so you can find out if one function is slow, where was it called from? Okay. So this is sort of the way how you would work with uh, Tideways. It gives you the high level view. You identify problems, look into it in more detail, and then look at specific traces from users to find out the, the root cause of problems. And um, the, the tracing is something that is not running all the time because it has more overhead than just the monitoring. And um, Otto will show how, how the tracing part also works. And um, by default, we randomly select a few traces and um, look for or prefer traces that are a bit slower and keep them. And um, what you can do as a developer then is using two different tools to trigger traces specifically interesting to you. So if you're trying to optimize something, you can tell Tideways to collect more data from everything that interests you. Um, we have a command line tool where you can trigger requests to your application that are elevated to the profiling mode, or you can use a Chrome extension to do that and click in the, uh, in the, in the Chrome toolbar on a button to generate a trace. And this, uh, the third way to get traces is called trace points, where you can um, select an endpoint that is interesting to you, let's say the search page, and then you elevate or let Tideways know that you're more interested in data from this endpoint. And Tideways, for a specific amount of time, will uh, generate way more traces just from that endpoint. And you can specifically even activate the core graph profiler for that um, to get more data. Yes, so that is sort of a rough overview of um, Tideways um, and what we are trying to achieve with it. And um, Otto is going to show um, a little uh, a bit how it's working interactively. Uh, I just want to mention a few uh, resources. So 
You can uh, try Tritase for free. There's a 30 day trial. And also, um, since we are working on PHP performance, we also have a, a podcast called the Undercover Elephant Podcast, where we consider PHP related performance problems. And uh, there's also a newsletter where we um, occasionally uh, link to new blog content that is also often focused on PHP performance. Okay, so. All right, thank you, Benjamin. So we've we've collaborated with Tideways for I think it's almost two years now, and that we've used it all the time. And it's a great product, so I warmly recommend you to try it out. And Benjamin is also a contributor to the PHP project itself. So just like with Seravo, when you are customer of Tideways, you will also be supporting open source development and ecosystem. And next I'm going to dive in into a demo showing an example site of how to, in practice, enable Tideways and find bottlenecks. So as a demo site, I have this. So this is a Finnish foundation where I'm involved and I'm allowed to use it as a demo. There's nothing special special in it. There's a few uh, slownesses I've implanted there for demonstration purposes. You can use Tideways for any site anywhere following the in installation instructions of Tideways. And if your site is hosted with Seravo, then it's already pre-installed and all you need to do is to activate it. And the instructions on how to activate it at Seravo can be found from our developer documentation. So first of all, you need to be running PHP 7.2 or newer, but most of our customers are already doing that. And we obviously have 7.3 and 7.4 available as well. So it's recommended to use the latest PHP version available. And here is the basic information what Tideways does. And here are the actual steps how to activate it. So first you need to create an account at Tideways. And when you have that account, then you can fetch your API key from Tideways. And then by inserting that API key on your website at Seravo and restarting PHP, it will start working and profiling your site and sending the prof profile information tideways. So to sign up at Tideways, you just simply go to tideways.com. And if you want, you can already do it right now while listening at this webinar. So you just go to the sign up page and create a new account. And I already made a demo account, so I'm going to log in with my demo account. So this is what you will see with the fresh new account. There are a couple of demo applications available, but I don't care about them. I'm going to hide them, clicking here, and then set up a new account. Uh, you can't have a space in them. Right. And there is a 30 days free trial you can start with. And there is also a special pricing for Seravos customers, which is 29 euros per month. So it throws me to the installation instructions. But I don't need to follow them. All I need to do is get the API key. And that is visible here. Let's zoom in a little bit. 
I'm gonna delete this account after the demo, so I don't mind sharing the API key temporarily. And then if you look at the installation instructions, so it says that you need to add this into a file called .tideways.key in the data WordPress directory. And to do this, I'm gonna jump into an SSH session to the website. And just copy the API key here, paste it here. And then I'm done. Then following the instructions, after I've added the API key in that file, then I just restart PHP, so it activates. And that's all I need to do here. And then I go here and start watching for the results coming in. So this works by tracing 1% of your traffic. So it's not tracing everything all the time. And here we can see now the first results coming in. And you can see here when I'm on this demo website and I'm doing a deep refresh. And if you look at the up, upper left corner, you can see it takes a while for this to load. And if I jump back here into the SSH session, I can actually use this tool that's available in Seravas environment, wp-speed-test, which will load the WordPress front page by default and bypassing all caching. So you get the actual PHP response time out of it. And this tells you it takes 1.5 seconds to load the main page and that's really slow. So let's profile and try to find out what's going on. So here you can also see that the scale goes up to 1,500 milliseconds. But this is aligned with what we saw. And the, here in transactions, you can see Tideways has built in support for WordPress, so it detects certain, uh, it can categorize certain kind of traffic. And by default, it uh, sorts this table by impact. And impact means that if you have a, when you combine the typical response time and how often that page is loaded, then that kind of adds up to what slowness has the biggest impact to your overall traffic. Let's go here, load the front page a couple of times to get some traffic. And now you can see it's come, it, the front page went on the top of this list. So now I can click on the front page to see the basic tracing, what it's saying about it and right now it's not saying anything in particular but uh, i can already see on these statistics that i'm interested specifically in the front page so what i'm going to do next is that i'm going to trigger a manual trace and i can do that by going here to traces and then here is a button trigger trace I select that and it tells me how to do it from the command line, but I simply just go here and copy this get parameter line. It's pretty long, but it doesn't matter. I just copy it and then I go here to the website in question and the specific page I want to profile and then I paste in that tracing URL and press enter and then it traced now if i go back here 
and reload this page I'm gonna see that here is a full call graph trace so now I can click on this trace and look what is going on. All right, and this is pretty neat. Do you have any questions so far? Is any of you doing this now live on your own site to try it out? As you can see, it's, it's really simple to get started since Tideways is pre-installed and you all need to do is uh, sign up and get your AP, API key and put it on the site. All right, so here we get the waterfall view and you can see here is the top level. This is categorized as WordPress in general. And then you can see that here is some SQL query. It takes 0 0.1 milliseconds so it's really fast so it doesn't matter here are also other things going on that are really fast and this section here is getting the header and this stuff before getting the header is here now, what do you think would be the interesting thing here to look into? So this is pretty visual and intuitive. So obviously here is a long bar. So that is something we want to look into. And now we found at least one problem with this site. It seems to be doing an a external HTTP request to the Twitter API. And if you are doing this in your PHP code on every page load, it means that your own site will never be faster than the speed of how, how long it takes for the API call from twitter.com to reply. And this is a bad practice to do these external calls in your PHP code, at least doing them on the front page all the time. It's a bad practice. So this is something we need to fix. But before we go, digging deeper let's find out more of the ui what features we have here available so here is a summary but also this is kind of a similar thing as in web grind actually this is more of a similar thing as in web grind and here you can also see that it here in this view it also says that we have a sleep in the code that is being called one time and it takes one second and now when i click on this curl exec you can see to the right that it's telling me what are the parents and children and i can now go here and look who is calling this curl exec and I can see that the parent functions are here. So I can click on this parent. And now it's showing the code path for this parent. And then I can continue clicking on the next parent. A next parent, a next parent. And this is now in the main scope. So somewhere there is a VP remote get call. Here is also a graphical view of the call graph. So here you can see, here is where WordPress execution starts. This is the top level namespace. And then you can see in a visual format how the PHP execution goes. One thing I can add here is that um, we just recently improved the stack trace specifically uh, for uh, WordPress related things that's interesting because it's missing the require calls for templates in between and the name of the templates. So you would more easily see that there is uh, uh, the VP remote get, for example, there's a temp um, 
uh, a PHP script in between that's called and what the name of that one is. So it increases the visibility a little bit more. Right, but now I'm not, when I'm clicking at this, I'm not actually getting the, the code context here. So one additional tip what to do after enabling Tideways is to go to the settings and then enable a couple of extra features. Now the reason to my understanding why these features are not enabled by default is that they are going to collect more information for your website and to protect your data on the website, these are not enabled by default, but I now specifically want to have this enabled. So it's going to tell me more information about the SQL queries. And then I have the code context There is one additional feature to enable and here I get the code context for errors and stack traces as well. Now I actually need to rerun this trace. So I'm going to go to the trigger trace page again. We're going to clear the URL. Then I just take this, copy, go here and add a slash and paste and press enter and wait for the trace to complete and then go back here, reload and now I see it here. So now I can click on this. Do we, did we get the demo effect here that we don't have the code stack here yet? Yeah, I think that that requires uh, the uh, more recent version to show. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, let's try another avenue then. I'm going to take this uh, function call and then I'm going to trace where in my code is this function called. So to do that, I copy the name of that function and then I'm going to use this handy little helper. We have pp-find code and give it as a parameter this function name. And this is now finding quite many lines but not unreasonably many here we can see this is in core and then i have in must use plugins and seo plugin and in team and when i'm looking at this i'm able to find this piece of code Actually, I could also use this as a search term because we saw from the trace what server it was connecting to. And now with that search, I only get one single result. So now I know I have this must use plugin here. And then I remember, oh yeah, this was just a demo thing. I don't actually need this in production and this is just slowing down and I'm not doing anything with it. So I'm going to delete that file, although I'm in the wrong that was the wrong path. So now it's deleted. And now when I run VP speed test the server, I can see that the average load time dropped from 1.5 seconds to 1.2 seconds so i shaved off 300 milliseconds with that and if we go to the front page and then load it a couple of times to get more traces will 
hopefully soon see here effect. I can also do a new trace to verify what is the situation before and after this. Here, reload, and now I have front page, and you can see that it's 1.29 seconds now. If we go here and look at the trace, we don't have the Twitter call anywhere in this trace. So this was a full example of how to find something. And I still have here a longer delay here going on, which was because of a call to sleep and I'm gonna in this case actually I, I can see the code path that it's calling get header so I know this is somewhere in the team And here I can see that in the theme, I have this line, which is causing the delay. And indeed it's here. So I would remove that and save. Then I can go back here and trigger a new trace for the front page and verify. Now you can see 221 milliseconds for the front page or 300 here. And now that's gone. And now it's still 300 milliseconds and here are more stuff i could optimize away but this was enough for a demo and in setavos environment you have this available in production and you also have it available in the shadow environments so if i log in here this site you can see that from this VP admin I have access to a staging shadow which is a copy of production and as you can see from this red bar it's telling me now that I'm now not looking at the real site but on the on a copy of production and I can go here and have tracing as well. So, or actually, I'm going to run this in the shadow environment and then restart PHP to get Tideways activated. And then in the shadow, do a deep reload a couple of times to give sideways a chan chance to run the trace. And here you can see that there is a section called environment, and you can see production here now. And as soon as we get traces from the shadow, it should appear here as well. Let's do a couple of more reloads here. And in the shadow environments, we are 
profiling 20% of the PHP requests because obviously the shadow is not getting any public public traffic, so it needs to be more aggressive, more frequent in its profiling. I would need to wait a little bit for it to show up here. All right. So that was the main demo. So what are the typical issues you see when profiling? So typical issues are related mostly to database and external requests. So database problems are quite frequent because uh, most of the WordPress plugin developers, they don't have any, they usually don't have in their development workflow a good way of testing how their plugin behaves with a lot of data. And uh, if you're using some plugin that hasn't been tested with, a, with large amounts of data and you are using it in production on a big site, then you will start running into issues that are related to handling a large amounts of data. For example, typically the code is fetching way too much information from the database, maybe a, the whole table contents or something like that, even though it would only need a small subset of that information to print out on the page. So if you know SQL, then what they are missing is a limit constraint. And another typical issue is the HTTP request going outside, as we saw in this Twitter, Twitter example. And if you can't remove the code like I did it now, then one typical way to solve this type of performance issues is to take that slow thing and wrap it in a transient. So transient is a built-in feature in WordPress that allows you to do simple key value caching. So in this very naive example, you can see that there's an if clause and the inside the if we are getting a transient, which is called, which is using the key full featured posts. And if this transient is found, then the value featured will be populated and the code will do something, maybe print it out or something like that. And if it doesn't exist, then this will evaluate to false. And then it's going to do a database query to get that information and populate the feature variable with real database contents. And here, before proceeding, it's saving this as a transient that is valid for 12 hours with this content. So the next time for the following 12 hours when this code runs, it's going to use the transient instead of doing the heavy database query. Obviously, in this example, the database query is not heavy, but this is just for illustration. And when you're doing whatever kind of optimization, so always remember to measure before and after your changes. And related to this, actually, Tideways has a pretty nifty feature that you can get this uh, release emails. So when you are doing a new commit, you can register that to Tideways, and then it's going to tell you that you have a new release. And here it will say that it will send you a summary 90 minutes later. And actually, and I'm missing that email, but you will get another email telling you how fast the site was before your release and how fast it's after the release. So it's easier for you to spot a potential regression in code changes. You can also get email notifications about general error rate going up. And you can get directly from exceptions notification emails and stack traces to find out what's going on. 
did this load, not yet. All right. So here you can find more information in our developer documentation. And we also have lots of other presentations on the topic because we like performance quite a lot. And if you're interested in learning more about profiling, we, for example, have this more in-depth presentation about you how to use Xdebug and in local de development environment for profiling. And we also have a presentation on, on database because database often makes or breaks your performance. We will also have a presentation on database performance in on Saturday in WordCamp Europe in the sponsor track. So that was my part. Thanks a lot. And now it's time for questions and answers. I see here was already a couple of comments. And here is a question about Chrome console tracing. So this is specifically about PHP tracing. And to be able to trace PHP, you need to have something that's running on the server and talking to PHP and looking what it's doing. Yeah, and here's also a question about similar services to Tideways. There are a couple others as well, but uh, as said, in our opinion, Tideways is far the best one, and we evaluated quite a few of them a couple of years back before we settled on Tideways. So Tideways is our recommendation. If you have any questions, you can open the mic or put your questions in the chat window. Do you, Benjamin, have something to add to my demo? Is there something relevant I missed? Uh, I don't think so. So um, I don't know about the environment not loading. It, sh it should turn up automatically once it's reporting data. So I would imagine that uh, the, it's, it's not reporting the data for some specific reason. All right. Well, pretty good for a live demo that we only got one thing that <laughs> yes that didn't go through exactly as it should. Since you're still online and there are no further questions, here are also a tab for errors. So this is not just for performance. This is also for getting in-depth information about errors going on in the PHP code. And uh, there is also a history tab. Wow, now you can see pretty nicely how the performance improved. So here we did our optimizations, and now it's permanently dropped down to this level. This is what you want to see in your Tideways after doing optimizations. And here you can choose the time frame. Now, when I just opened a new account, we don't have any history. But here you can look at the time frame up to 24 hours. And there is also a separate history tab where you can look, where you can go weeks and months back in time to see how things have evolved over a longer time span. Uh, so there's uh, another question. Um, if it's possible to integrate Tideways in the CI environment setup so that I can see performance impacts as early as possible without rolling out in, uh, to an environment. 
Um, so uh, yes, um, Otto showed the um, the environment feature um, not fully, but uh, you can set up your staging or CI system in a way that it reports data to um, uh, a staging environment that you set up in Tideways, and then the CI environment can run a either a small load test or um, use the the tightways CLI to trigger traces uh, during the CI run and then you can use this to uh, make decisions if you want uh, yeah the build to fail because the performance um, was worse than before or not so that is something you can build yourself using the APIs that tightways provides and um, yeah, a second question is, does Tideways have any impact on the execution time for the PHP server side? Um, uh, yes. So uh, any tool that's recording things or doing additional work uh, obviously has some kind of overhead. Um, but we are trying to minimize this as much as possible. And um, this is what I mentioned in the beginning with um, like, I don't know if I mentioned it specifically, but um, Tideways is running using a sample rate and either selects the monitoring mode, which has unmeasurable overhead. It only measures the name of the endpoint and how long the whole endpoint took. And this is essentially um, what the performance tab that Otto now scrolled away. Can uh, Otto, can you click on performance? Yes. So um, everything that Tideways is collecting using the monitoring mode is used as data for this screen here. So it's only collecting the most ba basic information, and that is really has not a measurable overhead. Since the Tideways extension is written in C and not in PHP code, we can optimize quite a lot. And uh, then if you have requests that are uh, collecting more detailed traces, the ones that Otto showed where, where you can see the SQL queries, um, specific WordPress functions, or even the whole call graph, then they will have um, a little bit more overhead. And that really depends on the kind of site. It could be as low as 2%, 5%. But uh, if you activate the call graph profiler, it can also go up to 50 or 100%. And this is why the call graph profiler is not enabled by default for any users but you trigger it as a developer. And now also the staging environment kicked in. So now I can look what's going on in staging and production separately. So this is perhaps the lowest hanging fruit you can do right now immediately without writing any custom. CI systems is just to push to staging first and see how it behaves here if there are any regressions and then push to production and related to CI workflows. If you are using our project template, you can find in the scripts folder, a subfolder called git, git hooks. And here we have an example of a post receive hook, which we actually install by default on our all new WordPress websites with us. And here, as part of this post receive hook, we are checking if you have Tideways enabled or not, and then registering your pushes to production as new releases. So this is automates tracking if the performance goes up or down with new releases. And this, this also works in staging. So you will get the, you can push to your staging environment and then wait 90 minutes for the summary before you push to production. Uh, so another question is if Tideways works with Apache. So um, yes, Tideways works with um, Apache and using mod PHP or with PHP FPM and Nginx. Um, so it works in both cases. And um, PHP has two different sort of modes that are important. One is called non-thread safety. The other one is called uh, Zen thread safety. Um, and these are important and um, to differentiate between. Apache can run either an NTS or ZTS mode for PHP. 
and we provide the binaries uh, for both so you can run it uh, in both in both PHP modes. So Tideways has very good documentation so you can look up here how to install it yourself and obviously if you're a customer of Seravoy you don't, you don't need to install anything itself because it's pre-installed and we are maintaining it and actually one thing worth mentioning also is that Tideways has pretty good uh, features for developers regarding organizations and users so for example if you're a web developer and you are doing development to your end customer and they have a Tideways account for their site then you can ask them to invite you into their account so then you can log in into their account and look at their Tideways data without you or your company having to have owned the account. This is pretty convenient. And we also have this in our documentation, how to invite more users. And this is frequently happening because when customers have some special code in production and they are trying to profile it with Tideways, then occasionally they ask us for help. And the way we do it is that they simply add us as users to their account and then we go and check out and read help them read the tideways results all right thanks a lot thanks benjamin and thanks for everybody attending and yeah thank you for inviting me follow our blog blog for more performance related tips